There is no doubt in my mind that one of the most critical components of a security awareness training program is making sure that you stay topical to the types of techniques and methods and topics that the fishers are going to be using to try to socially engineer your employees. Like during the times of COVID, we knew for sure that there were going to be a lot of COVID spams. And when there was an earthquake, they turned to whatever the latest news event is, that's what the fishers uh, are going to use. Or around Christmas time, they're going to try to do the fake, you know, Amazon gift card scams or around payroll, you know, in the uh, in the United States IRS, they're going to be doing W-2 scams, uh, both to HR and to employees. So one of the best things that you can do is kind of keep on top of what are the latest topics that the fishers are using? What are the latest methods? Like these days we're seeing increases in smishing, SMS-based phishing and WhatsApp phishing. The whole idea is to keep uh, on top of what they're doing and using so you can train your employees to be aware of those exact techniques because whatever the fishers are doing today it's not what they were doing two years ago and you need to stay on top of it. So here are the critical components of an awareness program. Number one, and you probably already know this, is to have executive support. But let's say you've got that in. So now what does the program look like? I want you to think ABCs, awareness, behavior, and culture. And within each of those brackets, there are certain things that you need to consider. Uh, the awareness component is communication. That's the program about getting information out to your people, having them run through learning management system modules, uh, posters, and all, all of those things that go with the communication side of things, that information dissemination side. Then you move into behaviors. And when it comes to behaviors, you want to monitor the behaviors that matter, that have a security impact, and then you want to shape the behaviors that you're going for. So where there are deficits, you want to figure out how to close those gaps, and I've got suggestions on that. And then ultimately, you want to shape the behavior channel, the behavior in the direction that is going to reduce human risk in your organization. And then lastly, on the culture side, you need to understand how to measure culture, understand what the different dimensions of culture are in your organization. And then you want to understand how you can build social pressures and social support systems to, to naturally foster the behavior, the beliefs and the values that you're looking for. And then figure out how to codify all of that into a sustainable program. Security awareness programs, easy to say, difficult to master, difficult to run one successfully. So what are some of the core components needed to run a successful security awareness campaign? Step one is content. Have the right content. Make it interesting. Make it engaging. Don't kill them with death by PowerPoint. Number two, get executive support and planning. You need execs on your side, not just for the budget, but to set the tone from the top as to what you're doing is important and beneficial, not just for the organization, but for the employees themselves. Number three is having campaign support material. Treat your campaign like a marketing campaign. Have it ongoing for a long period of time. Don't try to boil the ocean. Focus on a couple of behaviors at a time and reinforce them over a long period until people begin to change their behavior. Number four, testing. How do you know if you're improving if you don't test? So set a benchmark in the beginning and then test continually over the course of your security awareness campaign, your program, and measure where you are making improvement. Number five, once you've been testing and once you've been running, you need to measure it in some way. So have some reporting metrics in place that can show people what you're doing, where your efforts are targeted, what benefits they're bringing, what working well, what could be done better. And six, a bonus one, engage with the user, do surveys, do assessments, have little focus groups with them, figure out what works, what doesn't work, what people like, what they don't like. Let them come up with their own ideas. And if you incorporate all these steps, you are far more likely to have a successful security awareness campaign. Some of the key things you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you have good, high quality content that's relevant to the people. So it's gotta make sense to them. It's gotta be something that's interesting and engaging. None of that boring stuff that just puts us all to sleep, right? Um, you also wanna shorten it down. Instead of doing one large training once a year for maybe an hour, cut it back to maybe quarterly trainings that last 15, 20 minutes, or even monthly trainings that are 10 minutes or less. No matter how you do it, the repetition is gonna help quite a bit. The other thing you wanna do is you wanna reinforce that with simulated phishing attacks, which is gonna tell you what your folks are most vulnerable for. 
In other words, are they clicking on links? Are they opening documents and enabling things? And it also gives them a chance to practice what they learned in the training in a fail-safe environment. Those are some hot tips that'll help you in your program. So one of the most critical components of a successful security awareness program is executive support. People look at what their leaders are doing and it's really important that the execs don't just sponsor the project but they actually get actively involved. And that could be done by, for example, creating like a short video message of your exec whereby he or she explains why cybersecurity is important to the business as well as to him or her personally. The other critical component is understanding your audience and the key message. We can't throw too much detail at our people because it just results in cognitive overload. So rather focus on three to four key messages and then repeat those in all the communication channels. And then thirdly, I'd say that working with your communications or internal sort of branding and creative department is really important so that your message fits the company's tone of voice and their culture. And um, it's also really important to get uh, their approvals first. 